Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, you guys have been bugging me about doing a shop tour. So, I figure it's about time to do it. It's a pretty easy video to shoot. Uh, we're just going to, what I'll do is I'll start up on top and we'll look down at the whole place and then uh, we'll kind of cruise around and I'll shoot from some angles that you don't normally see in the videos. Um, and then you get an idea of uh, the space I'm working in and some of the other things that that I guess I just haven't highlighted in the videos. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm going to take the camera. I got the camera on my uh, little uh, my steady cam mount, and I'll take it upstairs, and uh, we'll shoot down from the top and uh, and uh, do a shop tour. Okay. Okay. So we we'll start the tour up here. We're on the upper level where the uh, my apartment is, and um, so I just step right out of out of my apartment and I can go down into the uh, down into the shop and work anytime I want. Um, late at night, you know, it kind of echoes in here so I don't do a lot of work late at night but I could if I wanted to. Um, so from the um, ground floor here, actually this is dock high and um, to the the ceiling up here, that's 17 feet right there just to kind of put things in scale and then uh, you can see the ceiling there. It's ribbed concrete and there's another business up above me that uh, <laughs> you hear them dragging crap around up there all the time um, they uh, they do some weird stuff up there but anyway they're uh, they're pretty cool no problem um, and then um, so that's kind of looking down the uh, uh, the mill and the lathe uh, the machine bay there um, and then I'm just gonna pan to the left here a little bit okay and then uh, now we're looking back towards the welding area, which is back in the back corner back there. And this door here uh, leads to my wife's uh, um, painting studio, and um, where she does oil paint and uh, and printing. Uh, she has a small etching press in there that I built her. Um, and let's see. Now we're going to pan just a little more. And then uh, there's another studio there uh, that goes in there, and that's her area also where she does kind of clean, uh, clean work, uh, framing and uh, matting and stuff like that, and uh, just handling larger uh, flat stuff. And then um, y you guys don't get to see this, but this is a, a balcony uh, as part of the apartment here. Um, that looks out over the shop. Actually, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go over there and we'll look uh, we'll look down at the shop at that angle too. Um, and then we're going to cruise down these stairs here and go out into the shop and we'll look at uh, look at some more stuff in detail. Okay, so we're over on that uh, the balcony that I uh, was just pointing out over there, and we can see down into the uh, welding area. And uh, I'm just gonna pan around here, and you can kind of see where I was there. Um, that's where I was shooting from just a minute ago. And now uh, there's the main door to get in and out of here. All right. So, and then this wall here on our side here, this is the wall to uh, over to my uh, wife's studio area, which is um, where she does painting and stuff. So, okay, so let's cruise downstairs and uh, go look at some stuff downstairs. I just wanted to show this real quick. This is an example of my wife's metalwork. She built these. Uh, she built these grates here. They were actually for a fireplace originally, but uh, we liked them so much that uh, when we moved out of that house, we took them with us, and then uh, we repurposed them here um, as a, you know, just just to keep uh, keep the dog from coming up there if we don't want him to come up there. Uh, I did the hinges, but she built the uh, the actual uh, wrench frames. And this is painted with that uh, stainless steel steel it paint, just uh, for reference. Anyway, uh, that's an example of some of her metal work. So, leave that alone. Okay, so first thing we'll look at here, this is uh, my English wheel. Uh, I built this about, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago maybe. And uh, there's a blog article uh, on the blog. If you want a little more detail about it, you can go look at that. Um, like a lot of things, uh, I never got around to painting it. It works fine. Um, this uh, actually, we'll zoom in on this wheel. This wheel's kind of interesting. Um, anyway, it's your kind of standard English wheel with a top adjuster and a bottom adjuster. Although I just use the top one. Uh, these are some uh, 
seismic bracing from some kind of building or something and I ended up with some tube um, that I built the thing out of. Um, I don't know, what else? You could talk for hours about English wheels, but uh, that's not what this video is about. So this, uh, this wheel here, this is completely fabricated, this wheel here. Um, my goal was to have a real lightweight, uh, low inertia wheel. And the reason you want that is you're running the sheet back and forth and this thing's changing directions like that. So every, every time you go back and forth, you have to stop that inertia and then restart it in the other direction. So I wanted a lightweight and strong wheel. This is made out of 17.4 pH stainless steel. Um, I rolled uh, two circular uh, rings and then welded this all together, then machined the OD and polished it and did all that. Um, anyway, so that's my lightweight, uh, excuse me, I get the, I get the snack burps. Um, uh, my lightweight interpretation of an upper English wheel wheel and lower anvil there. So this is uh, my 26 inch uh, V26 dual man saw. And uh, I got this off Craigslist, and the, the picture that they showed, uh, they only had two pictures, and it showed these little hand wheels right here, and then a shot from the other side. Uh, but I recognize these hand wheels in, uh, in this housing right here as do all. Um, so I went and looked at it, oh, well, this handle too. Um, I went and looked at it and ended up buying it, and it's been a great saw. Um, these raise and lower. Uh, this guy here, and it's got a little scale on it, you can't see that, and that locks that. Um, this table weighs about a country ton here, it's about almost three inches thick, and uh, it's it's not hollow underneath, it's got a, uh, I don't know, a ribbing, basically a ribbing and a flat plate uh, all cast into it underneath, so this thing is uh, quite, the, quite the beast. Um, and then here, if I loosen this, I can actually tip the table. Um, and this table only tips uh, this way and this way. Uh, some of them actually tip this way, although why you would need that, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I've never seen anybody do that. So anyway, that's the dual saw. You saw the front of it in another video recently, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so I, I shot a bunch of videos on the repair of this machine here. Um, this is a... Uh, Automatic, automatic uh, jig bore. It's it's kind of configured like a lathe, but it can do some things that a lathe can't do. Um, this table moves here and rotates. It's on a rotary table, and then it has a uh, a sub spindle here too. And um, a future project, a future video project coming up is I have a, a, a variable frequency drive here and a motor. We're going to mount it to, uh, we're going to build some mounts for this. And this is an R8 spindle. And then uh, we'll try this thing out and actually cut some metal on it and uh, see how she does. Uh, but I fixed, the, I fixed the hand wheels on this and uh, did a bunch of stuff on this. So there's a whole bunch of videos on that if you want to go look at them. Okay, so this is kind of looking down the main machine bay here. Uh, you mill, lathe, you know, normal stuff. You guys have seen all that. Here's the new uh, uh, granite uh, surface plate, and um, and then on the left over here, I'm just going to pan over here. That's my uh, my toolbox <laughs> that you see me scurrying uh, over to once in a while in the videos to snag something out of there. Um, anyway, I'm I'm used to working out of my box, so uh, I'm slowly kind of taking things out of it and putting it near machines that make sense to have the things near and uh, but I'm still kind of like tuned to working out of my box so uh, and then uh, over here we have a, a small inspection area here and we're gonna get in a little closer over there and look at a couple things over there um, so anyway it's you know it's near the other surface plate I guess um, uh, nothing nothing remarkable small surface plate and then some gauging and stuff like that so we'll go look at that in a sec all right so this is a kind of small inspection or, you know, where all my inspection kind of started out. This is kind of what I wanted to show here. Um, this is a uh, toolmaker's microscope that was built by my friend Charlie. And he gave me this thing and this is one of my, 
uh, I would say prized possessions here that I got from him. Um, the thing's absolutely fantastic. Um, he engraved his name in it. He built the he built the telescope and the microscope and everything. And these are commercial optic elements down here. But he built all the uh, objective stuff uh, himself, and he engraved his name in there. And this was built in 1958 before I was born. Um, so it's got an X Y uh, stage on it and a little small rotary table. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Maybe I, I'll, I'll come in a little closer and uh, we'll look at that. Um, and then you know, it's got a little drawer for accessories. So, uh, you know, the drawer is built like a damn machinist would build it. You know, it's way too tight. So, <laughs> I don't know. He probably measured it with a damn micrometer. I think uh, I need to uh, get a little lube on this thing here. I haven't used it for a while. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to come in a little closer. Uh, then a small surface plate where I do lapping and stuff like that. Uh, height gauges of different flavors and sizes. Um, you know, usual stuff. Um, I don't know. What else can you say about this junk, right? So. Okay, so there's the tool making microscope that Charlie made. And uh, here, we'll spin the, we'll spin this stuff here. So it's got a, uh, it's got little ruler scales here too, which are kind of neat. Um, let's see. I don't remember how to adjust that one. That one may be stiff. Oh no, that one doesn't move. Yeah. I don't remember what this knob's for. <laughs> Good question, Tom. Or maybe that. No? Okay, I don't remember now. But this one has a movable scale here, so you can kind of set it on a whole inch. And um, and then uh, make movements here uh, on the on the dials, and this goes up and down. And I put this on there. This is for a little LED ring light to go on there. Um, anyway, and you can let's see. Hopefully, you can see this where he engraved that. Anyway, that's one of my uh, my favorite all time tools. All right, so this is kind of looking uh, back. Uh, uh, here's the milling machine off to the left here. Toolbox is over on the right. Uh, I got a little tech bench over there. Uh, my lap, one of my laptops is on there, and that's uh, <laughs> internet music coming through it right now. Um, and then this is uh, kind of uh, mill rapid tooling stuff here that you want to just be able to put your hand on real quick. Um, I. I'm not sure what you guys have seen in that uh, in that particular area. Maybe we'll go in a little closer and we'll look at some stuff over there too. All right, so this is a little closer shot of this area here. Um, I've segregated all my uh, my end mills uh, for the mi the milling machine cutters into different sizes here. That way I can get onto them easily. Um, lubricants, clamps. Uh, this is just kind of. Um, quick grab, uh, you need a quick end mill for something. Uh, most of the time I work right off of this uh, area. Let's see here, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Um, I work right off of this area. If I need something specific, then I go in here. Uh, my new uh, hand wheel, still haven't found a good place for that, but uh, I will. Okay, so now we can look at the, uh, so we got mill tooling in here, um, parallels, one, two, three blocks, that kind of stuff. Uh, angle plates, um, box parallels, things like that. Um, grinding vise, tilt tables, extra jaws, and then uh, boring heads, that kind of stuff. Uh, then there's a dividing head and spin indexer down there. Um, what do we got? Oh, uh, some taper shank drills, some junk. That's kind of a disused drawer. Anyway, that is a very, oh, I think there's some clamps in here too. Now these are sure form files. I didn't have a place for those, so kind of ended up over there. And then uh, spring hand clamps. All right, so this is kind of um, setup tooling and stuff like that in, uh, on this shelf unit here. Uh, and there's the lathe and there's the mill. You can see that. So uh, extra chucks, steady rests, um, blocks, uh, riser blocks. I got my little diacro bender there. Um, and uh, down there is a little tubing bender. 
So it's this kind of stuff that uh, um, goes to something else. Uh, it goes in a vise, goes on the table, uh, or goes on a machine. Um, and then, you know, we got welding blocks, uh, setup blocks and stuff like that for doing spacing and stuff. So, um, and then I'm just gonna pan down here. You guys have seen the anvil before. I think I talked about that in a previous video. Um, that's my Arm & Hammer 430 pound uh, anvil there. Okay, so uh, you've probably seen the lower part of this uh, in some videos, but this is a, a jib crane that I built. It's mounted to uh, these, uh, one of these, uh, can you see, oh, there's my finger, uh, concrete column here. Um, and uh, it's clamped to the beam via some uh, heavy duty tie rods that are torqued. And then uh, I got some chicken bolts, uh, uh, concrete anchors going in there too. Um, anyway, it's just a self-supported jib crane. I've load tested it uh, um, well beyond uh, what I have a label for capacity. Um, anyway, uh, the older I get, the more material handling stuff I end up buying uh, because I just can't buck this junk around anymore. I used to be able to put a 12-inch chuck on by myself and uh, you know without a crane, but now pff, I don't even want to try. Uh, it probably kill me all right so there's the main welding table um, it's uh, 48 inches by 72 inches it's two inches thick it's Blanchard ground on, uh, on the top surface here um, and uh, anyway it was one of those uh, kind of long deals uh, I saved it from the scrapper um, Anyway, welding table. It's a flat table. It's a surface plate too if you need it, but it's a nice uh, reference plane. And there's our pinwheel parts. All right, so this is the uh, the forming table. Uh, so this table is uh, kind of uh, modeled after a, uh, a blacksmith's uh, swage block, uh, except it's in table form. So we got a bunch of different shapes where you can uh, you can hammer around these edges. You can uh, you can close something down, um, you can um, push cones into these circles and close them down. So you can, you can do some different stuff and just to, uh, there was no rhyme or reason to this, just um, the holes and where they are. Uh, it was just kind of, I wanted to have some flat table area, uh, but I also wanted to have a bunch of shapes so I kind of spread them out and uh, I got a dry throat here. Um, I spread them out a little bit, and um, you know, on the computer, and then had the thing burned out. This is inch and a half A36 steel here, uh, and this one is 48 inches by 36 inches, and it's lower um, so that you can get a good lick with a hammer. Uh, if the table's too high, it's hard to get a good swing unless you're standing on a box or something. Uh, and I got a couple vices, and then uh, the railroad track. What I do with that is I extend that out and then I can work hollow shapes uh, around the railroad track. Um, if I have something like a tube or a cone or something like that, I can slide it onto that and use that like a big mandrel. All right, so this is kind of behind the lathe over here. And um, so I don't think you guys get to see this area very much here. Uh, anyway, I got my uh, little decal single lip grinder back here. Uh, it uses the same power as the lathe, so uh, I just swap plugs with that so I, when I want to use it. It didn't need to be hardwired in, and uh, um, so I just feel like doing that. Uh, this is my uh, Hell hammer here uh, for shaping sheet metal. Uh, so it's a power hammer. You fire it up, and uh, I'm not going to turn it on right now. Uh, and you can pound sheet metal on that. And then uh, here's a shop bag and uh, post dolly here for working sheet metal. So you can uh, pound sheet metal on that, uh, do some hand shaping, and then this. Uh, you've seen my hammer collection. And I don't know, what else? Uh, gotta keep my throat wet. Okay, so here we got the grinder alley here. Um, carbide grinder here. Um, Shop built a uh, six inch belt sander here, so I built that 
long time ago now. Um, that was a weekend project, so uh, we needed a belt sander at work, and uh, I decided to go ahead and build one. Um, so I built one, and uh, um, it's been going for years. Um, pretty happy with it. And uh, this is a five horse motor. That's all I had, and uh, and it's just got a pulley that's directly coupled to the shaft, and uh, and then the belt tracking adjustment here. Uh, Debreeding wheel and wire wheel, and then down here small bench grinder and um, some other stuff that you've probably seen already. Uh, Bird master and a chop saw. Okay, so and we're getting into the uh, into the welding department over here. So we got our uh, closing drill press, and you guys have seen some videos on that. Uh, Millermatic 200 uh, big welder. Uh, you know, when you got a lot of stuff to put together, this is a lot faster. And then, uh, actually, I'll, I'll bring the camera down here. We got the TIG welder, and then some sheet metal equipment over here, and I'll, I'll come in a little closer on that. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Actually, you know what, we're gonna do, uh, I got the camera on my, uh, my steady cam mount, so we're gonna just fly you guys in here. Okay, that looks like a good spot. Let's land it. Okay, so Miller TIG welder here on the right. Uh, this is a Sinker Wave 300. Uh, came from uh, Lawrence Livermore Lab, uh, sealed bid sale. Uh, I got it, I don't know, 10 years ago, something like that. Um, a lot of guys have asked about the little Rotex punch over here. Let me uh, double check and make sure. Yeah, 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 you can see that. Um, anyway, yeah, I'll probably come in a little closer on this. A little Rotex punch. Um, so you, you know, you can push the uh, release lever and you can uh, rotate around and it's got a bunch of different punches and uh, whatnot. Uh, Beverly shear here, and I take the handle off just so it doesn't clock me in the head when I walk by it for something to do. Um, and then a small 24 inch uh, Diacro hand shear. I'm looking for a Diacro 24 inch uh, uh, little box and pan brake. So, uh, um, for a good price. Um, what else? And I'm, I'm going to come in a little closer here because there's something else to see on the side. Okay, for the guys that haven't seen one of these, uh, this is the this is the cat's meow and uh, sheet metal punches here. So you can uh, you can release this and index around, and here's all your punches here. And this one goes from let's see, what does it go down to? goes down to 532 and up to 2 inches. Um, so then you match up the, uh, the lower like that and it has a detent and then uh, you can punch and then it even has a little, uh, let's uh, go around there, it's got a little shear here too. Of this off here, so it's got a little shear here too. You can you can lop stuff off with the little shear. Uh, anyway, these are pretty cool. Uh, Diacro did it right, um, or excuse me, Rotex did it right. Um, these punches are very close to the outside edge, so you can see what you're doing. And uh, let's uh, index to a punch here. Um, and the stripper, the stripper bars. There's enough clearance underneath and they're open so that you can see what you're doing when you put something in there. And then I used to use this as a stripper. Um, so if you punch something like that, right, it sticks on the, uh, on the punch so you just put that up in there and you strip it and you get a hole. Anyway, uh, if you need to make little washers or whatever, or you're working on some sheet metal stuff, they're wonderful. Alright, it's kind of hard, this thing's vertic, uh, my clamp collection is kind of vertical, so uh, this is all my my clamps. I finally got serious and organized these, uh, I don't know, a year and a half ago or two years ago, something like that, and I, I just was sick of dealing with these in drawers and, uh, and whatever and hanging under the bench. So I organized this whole thing, C-clamps, vice grips, vice grips. Uh, I got some chain binders up there that I don't use very often. Um, I got Bessie clamps in the back. 
Uh, so it's right near the welding area, and I can just snag it and go. And then off to the left over here, I'm just going to pan. So I've got these pallet racks, and uh, so I've got, excuse me, uh, kind of longer term storage up above. And then down below are my kind of use all the time stuff. Uh, I got materials in here in bins and, uh, you know, tape and nails and, you know, all the stuff that a shop collects uh, uh, over the years. Uh, you know, I'm trying to, do, <laughs> trying to do a job, right, or do some work. Okay. Um, oh, and then we got uh, uh, welding filler rod here. And uh, those are just Unistrut clamps there, uh, Unistrut pipe clamps holding out all that. And uh, these are tools that I want to just be able to put my hand on real quick uh, when I'm doing some fab work, uh, squares and files and, uh, you know, dividers and junk like that uh, that I have extras of. So now I've put them out and uh, I can get my hands on them quicker. Okay, so this is looking back in the, uh, towards the apartment here. Uh, there's the apartment up above. And uh, more storage over here. Um, you know, bearings and gears and uh, nuts and bolts and uh, supplies and I don't know. Everybody's got a pile of stuff that they got to deal with. So uh, um, anyway, I've just kind of created these double level uh, kind of storage things. So um, yeah, we're just going to cruise down in there a little farther. There's some more stuff to look at. All right, so what we got here is uh, we got my uh, my big Kennedy roll away here with all my uh, my hand tools in it. Uh, and that used to be in the shop where I worked, and um, um, I got pretty much. You know, you guys know I'm a tool bug, okay? It's not like a secret, okay? So uh, pretty much you have to have a big toolbox to carry it all. Um, this is uh, mildly interesting here. This is a uh, uh, a bar rack that I built, and I built it out of Unistrut. And then, um, um, and maybe we'll go in a little closer and look at that. So that's all made out of Unistrut and Unistrut clamps. Um, it was before I had a MIG welder, so uh, I, w I, uh, I had a bunch of Unistrut and, uh, and EMT, and all those are very cheap materials. Uh, and actually, it makes a pretty sturdy rack. Uh, actually, we'll go in there and we'll take a quick look at it, and uh, you guys might might like it. All right, so I got different bars. There's no, I don't have that much material here, so it's, uh, there's not any really rhyme or reason to the way this is organized. It's just, it's just me, so it's convenient storage. Now, uh, what I am kind of happy with is uh, what these are here. I have these liners. Um, you know, when you got little thin stuff and, you, you have to reach it through, right? You, and you you want to catch a crossbar. It's really nice to have a tray in there, right? Well, what these are, um, these are just metal studs from uh, building construction. There's a place down the road from us here that uh, sells drywall and um, and uh, metal metal stud wall uh, supplies. Anyway, I just went down and bought a bunch of it, and it's cheap. And you just cut it. It's already bent into a U shape. I just cut it and then bent the fronts down uh, so they don't push through. And now I got these nice trays that uh, that drop that drop in. Now they don't have a lot of sizes, so uh, you're kind of limited on sizes. But uh, if you need cheap sheet metal channels, uh, look at uh, metal studs uh, for walls. All right, so this is looking back into the welding area again. Um, Johnson uh, horizontal saw here. Um, I've had this for about. I don't know, eight months or something like that. I haven't even taken it off of the pallet yet. I'm, I'm going to build a, a little cart for it at some point uh, so I can wheel it around and uh, take it around the shop. It needs a little bit of work. The motor mount's a little funky and um, it needs a base and the coolant pump doesn't work. But it cuts fine and I got it for 300 bucks. So uh, um, the hydraulic cylinder works fine and we just cut this. Uh, this big chromoly tube off here uh, the other day, and uh, it works great for that. So, uh, um, what what do you say, right? It's a horizontal drop saw, not, not much to. So, oh yeah, let's. Uh, so I, I kind of like these as opposed to cold saws and uh, and uh, and hot chop saws. And the reason is is I could put something like this in there, 
and I can walk away and I can go do something else for the, the 20 minutes that it takes to go through that, okay? Um, I don't have to stand here, I don't have to pull on the lever, I don't have to fart around, right? Um, these narrow bands, they don't take out much material, so you don't need a huge motor to run them. And um, um, they're, so they're pretty efficient that way, um, you know, for cutting off large rounds and things like that. Um, and I don't have to do the work, so uh, I can go do something else. So I parallel process instead of serial process uh, uh, materials and work. Okay, so then uh, this is kind of the front view of the, the big do-all saw and uh, the inspection area over here. Um, I don't know, what else? What else do you guys want to see? Speak up. Um, I don't know, that's all I'm kind of willing to show. Uh, that's really the shop. My wife's stuff, that's her stuff, so uh, that's kind of off limits. And um, you don't get to see any of that. Um, I don't know, what else? Oh, it's my new engine hoist that I bought. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to need that to move that big old rotary table and put it on the mill. And, uh, and I got some other heavy stuff coming my way here, so uh, um, I don't know, guys. Um, that's about it. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything else to show you right off the bat. Um, if you have questions, throw up some comments and I'll try to answer them. And, uh, um, anyway, so that's just a quickie shop tour of uh, Ox Tools shop. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching.